hello. It's weird having multiple camera angles. Hello everyone, how's it going? Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm excited, we're making Christmas candy. Uh, what kind of candy are we making? We're making homemade candy canes. We're making sponge candy, which is the first thing that I'm gonna make, except I am waiting for my boyfriend to get <laughs> into the apartment. Um, we're also making uh, peppermint bark. Also, my shirt is tucked in and I feel like that's weird. I untuck my shirt because I'm hip and cool with the kids. Like, we, one, two, three, four, five. Seven. Things are happening now. There we go. You have to fill up the Brita filter in the nice sink because I did dishes today. Wow. Good job. Good. You should be proud. You guys should be proud too. Although, I don't want a kiss from any of you. <laughs> That's unnecessary. You can give him a kiss. I'll though. kiss you guys. And uh -huh. guys. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you are, my boyfriend will kiss you. That's that's a phrase I didn't think I would say. All right. Anyway, All right, now we get to baking, candy baking. Is it really baking? I'm not putting anything in the oven. Butter and flour, a hotel pan. I don't have a hotel pan. I have normal kitchen things. Butter this, and when I say butter, I mean I'm just gonna spray it with the Pam spray. I don't know what my culinary textbook is so against uh, Pam spray for, but it's always like, no, butter and flour the pan. I'm like, this has not butter in it. It's canola oil, palm oil, coconut oil, and soy lecithins, but it also has flour, so this does the work for me. I. Spray that, we're gonna hydrate some gelatin, so I need gelatin. Do I remember where I put my gelatin? No. A very large box of gelatin. So, we're gonna take a small bowl. This is a small bowl. I could use a smaller bowl. We're gonna use a very small bowl. Better. Alright, it's weird because it wants me to make a lot of gelatin, but also it's like you don't need to use all of the gelatin. It's like combine, hold on, 10 grams of gelatin and 40 grams of cold water, but then only add 10 grams of the hydrated gelatin into, I don't, I don't know. How much gelatin? I only need three grams. This is six. So we're doubling this, but then I also don't need any of this, like all of the gelatin, because we're wasteful here, apparently. Six grams. I need like 24 of cold water. You guys know the thing of like, you can't just have one beverage. You need one for hydration, uh, one for pleasure, one for caffeine. I got my water, I got my bubble tea. I got this interesting looking mixture. <laughs> this is your sign to make yourself hot chocolate with literally just any like chocolate you have in your house. Like it's all chocolate. It'll all make hot chocolate if you put it into water or milk. I prefer to use milk. I understand that the reason why someone wouldn't use milk for uh, hot chocolate is because they would be lactose intolerant. Um, and I understand that, but I also think the people that make hot chocolate with water are fucking criminals. Anyway, Corn syrup, 247 grams. I need literally a pound of sugar. 456, actually more than a pound, 456 grams. We're gonna add 133 grams of water in the mug that I used before to measure out the water. 133. Oh no. I also didn't tear out the scale. I don't know, I'm boiling out the water anyway. That's the only reason I'm putting the water in is to boil it out. It's kind of counterintuitive, but here we are. I also need 40 grams of honey. Get in there. 40 grams. Can I help you? Mason's here, guys, if you can't 
here. Come here. Are you gonna stop screaming now? You're embarrassing me. You're gonna ruin my shirt too. There's so many holes in this sweater for your nails to go into. <laughs> We're gonna heat this up to uh, what temperature? Go to 284 degrees. Oh, I wasn't supposed to add the honey yet. Oh well. Yeah, I'm also gonna measure out the uh, baking soda because we add baking soda to it and once it's hot and then it bubbles up and then you get aeration in the candy. Yay! 13 grams. 13 grams is a lot more baking soda than I thought. Uh, well that's cooking. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what to do in the meantime. I could start on another candy, but all of the other candies are kind of touch and go. <laughs> like, I could make chocolate bark, but that's just literally, I'm gonna start melting chocolate, sure. We're gonna do chocolatey things by tempering chocolate. Do I entirely remember how to temper chocolate? No. Am I gonna temper the chocolate properly? Maybe some other stream. You guys gotta make sure that doesn't boil over. You guys are in charge of that now. <laughs> In the meantime, while I do uh, everything else, because I'm doing everything else, so that's your one job. I'm watching you guys. Watch the pot. <laughs> Again, it says should not be used on stove top. I'm not gonna listen, <laughs> because this is the only bowl I really have. <laughs> Boil over, yes, let there be chaos. No. I actually want these to turn out kind of nice because the sponge candies, I always used to get them at... Hold on, I have scissors. We have technology. What am I doing? But I always used to get the, um... I think they're called like angel food candy when I used to buy them, but we would get this candy that I'm making, um, from Fleet Farm. <laughs> Back in my Wisconsin days of living in Wisconsin, you know, a store called Fleet Farm where you could get anything from a chicken feed to flannel shirts to candy. Um, I still occasionally ask my parents to get me trail mix from said store. No, no farm and fleet gang. That's weird. It's Fleet Farm. Farm and fleet is... Garbage. I've never been to one, but to be fair, I never really wanted to go into a fleet farm either, but... I also don't want it to go too high, because then I'm gonna burn the chocolate. I say chocolate with parentheses, because again, it's not actual chocolate, it's white chocolate, which doesn't have any cacao in it. Just cocoa butter and vanilla. So it's not technically chocolate but it's still classified as a chocolate? I don't know. I don't classify things. Because if I did classify things, again, I would make a coconut a mammal. Milk. Hair. That's it. How are mammals classified? They have hair and produce milk for their offspring. What does a coconut have? Hair. And we don't know what the coconut's doing with its milk. Technically it's water. But then why is there such a thing as coconut milk? Getting into the specifics, the classifications. I should also pull out a sheet tray for me to pivot it, pour the chocolate bark onto, so another tray. Need some parchment so it doesn't stick. This is parchment paper. Huh. Both of you behave. And you guys. I don't know what you were doing beforehand, but Behave. <laughs> what are we at with this? 190, 2, 2, 227, 240, 252. Welcome to counting with Amanda, where we learn to count in the worst way possible because none of those numbers were in succession. The white chocolate's basically melted. I'm gonna add a little bit of peppermint extract to it because I bought an ungodly amount of peppermint extract and I've just been using it in everything. The amount of peppermint uh, chocolate mochas that I have made coffee-wise is a sounding. <laughs> huh. There we go. 
I'm gonna pour this on. Here is all of the white chocolate because I only bought this much white chocolate because I didn't know how much this would make. You stay doing what you're doing because I'm trying to do other things right now. I'm gonna turn you down a little bit because now I'm afraid things are gonna burn. I'm gonna add a couple drops of red food coloring to it. I, I'm actually really afraid that this is burning. What temperature are you at? Now that we boiled it to the temperature that we needed to, now we have to remove from heat and allow to cool for five minutes which is just enough time for me to finish this peppermint bark. So I got some red food coloring in it and I'm literally just gonna kind of swirl it on top. Let me get you guys over here seeing the action. Look at that, peppermint bark. Rip tiny camera. All right, let me finish up the peppermint bark. See if I can try to fix it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I already have some crushed up candy canes here. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top for, for, for some funsies. In the meantime, no one look at that uh, side of the screen. <laughs> look at the peppermint bark. I can't hold it up because <laughs> otherwise all the melted chocolate's gonna fall. But peppermint bark is done. We will deal with that in a second. I'm gonna put this somewhere else. Um, I don't actually need that much gelatin. I was gonna add all of the gelatin. Scrape in literally like two grams. <laughs> ah yes, the consistency of gelatin. It's a, it's a good time. That's three grams, so yeah. I love that I made all of this gelatin literally for like that tiny corner missing right there. Huh. Oh, it's bubbling and sizzling. I wish you guys could see the reaction that's gonna happen, but I don't know how to stir it and hold the camera. It's gonna be very interesting, but I'm gonna add it. Oh no. Coke scale, absolutely. Huh. Vigorously mixing. It's getting bubbly and weirdly white. It says the baking soda should have been sifted. I probably should have done that because now I'm seeing some chunks in there. But it also didn't have like as wild of a reaction as I would have thought. But it does look very different now. It's like a very interesting caramel color. Is that mixed and incorporated good enough? Hopefully. Because <laughs> I'm pouring it into the pan now. It's fine. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks like a marshmallow or a chocolate. It does, but now, again, we're putting this to the side. That we're gonna break into pieces and then cover in chocolate. Um, the bark over there, we're gonna break into pieces. It's already chocolate. It doesn't need to be covered in chocolate. What else are we doing? Making candy canes. Am I afraid for the candy canes? Absolutely, for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, um, if I go to the candy cane recipe in the book, it's very intense um, for no reason whatsoever. But it's like combine things and then cook things and then pour the mixture onto an oiled marble slab. I don't got that. I'm gonna use a silk mat pad thing. My big silk mat. I'm gonna put uh, the candy on here. Um, I also don't have heat resistant gloves. I have a bunch of latex gloves that I'm going to uh, put on my hands as to not burn myself. Um, it also says use a heating lamp. I do not have a heating lamp. So this is, this could go wrong for a multitude of reasons. Another reason, um, I'm making candy canes, but I don't have white food coloring because it's not really readily and actively available. This could go bad semi quickly. Uh, this could go bad very quickly. <laughs> so recipe is over here. I need 575 grams of sugar. Um, how much? 575. That's not enough. Don't worry, I got the big bag. 500. This is so much sugar. But then again, it's a candy cane. That's really the only ingredient in this. Only 145 grams of water? That seems like a very small amount. Actually, that's pretty good amount.
gallon of water for the amount of sugar that I have. Add glucose syrup. I don't have glucose. That is another ingredient that is not readily available to me. So I'm gonna use corn syrup, which is also what I did for the honey combs, because I think it also wanted me to use glucose for that. Again, I don't know where to buy pure glucose. So also add a little bit of cream of tartar, which is optional. I don't know why. Apparently I'm adding a fourth of a teaspoon. I have cream of tartar, so I am gonna add it. What? 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 <laughs> he screams. For what reason? I don't know. <laughs> so we're gonna heat this up. He screams for ice cream. I'm not making ice cream, I'm making candy. Heat this until it boils, and then in another container, um, this one had baking soda in it. I'm literally just gonna rinse it out. Meow! If I give you love and attention, will you stop screaming? That's how children normally work. <laughs> corn syrup, 180 grams. So the corn syrup, <laughs> perfect timing. Mason. One. 880, 180. All right, that, I need measuring spoons. I have those somewhere. A fourth of a teaspoon. There we go. Is this boiling? It's good enough to be considered boiling. <laughs> Who knows? the definition of boiling is. Me, probably, at one point in my life, not anymore. Cooked at 313 without stirring. Latex gloves, which I'm literally just gonna put four on each hand and hope for the best because that is what we did in culinary school and it was concerning. Like there are special like sugar gloves that you use because sugar is very hot. Again, I'm cooking this to 300 degrees. So it's gonna be really hot. Um, and in culinary school, they're like, no, we're not gonna give you heat gloves. <laughs> we're gonna give you... Yeah, it's really hot. It's like the nape... I keep seeing people refer to it as like the napalm of the baking world because it sticks to you. And you can't wipe it off because then it just sticks to the rest of you and you get burnt everywhere that it touches. That's glove number three. <laughs> All right, here are the fourth gloves. We got four gloves now on each hand. I have eight gloves on right now. <laughs> Sugar gloves. Yeah, they're like thick latex gloves, which is why Do you guys hear that? <laughs> I'm having a great time, never mind. <laughs> I, I'm way too easily entertained. <laughs> like, during my sugar course, the amount of just sugar burns I had all over my hands, and fun fact, um, Culinary students are fucking brutal and like baking and pastry students because I learned that if you get sugar on yourself Just leave it. Don't try to wipe it off Obviously because then it'll like burn the rest of you as you try to like wipe it off and it like smears and then you burn your hands But also if you just leave it on there, then it burns you worse but third degree burns hurt less than second degree burns because third degree burns burn off like the nerve endings, so you can't feel the burn anymore. But with second degree burns, you can feel the burn, so it's just best to leave it on there and let it burn yourself more and make the, the burn worse because it's gonna hurt less. Fucking bonkers to me. I'm also gonna be coloring half of it red. I don't know how the other half will work out, but I'll try my best. But all of it will be peppermint flavored. Is that enough peppermint? I do not know. So I just have boiling, very, 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 very hot sugar that I'm just now going to dump onto my table. I'm afraid. I want, I want it to 
happen, but also I'm gonna pour it on the table and it's gonna be hot and I'm gonna have to like continually keep it like in a ball. All right. Like it's, okay, I'm gonna do two separate piles because one of them I wanna color red. Ah. <laughs> and the other one I'll keep white. They're gonna mash together though. What I do now is I wait for it to cool a little bit and then once it starts, not yet. <laughs> I let it cool on the table a little bit more until I can start like folding it in. I'm gonna add the food coloring into this one though. Da, 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 da. I don't know how much to add. I think that's good. So I literally just need to keep doing this for a while. <laughs> Just kind of start scooping it and stretching it the best to my abilities now. But hopefully I can just mix the red in. It's still hot, but it's not fully sticking to me, so... Alright, I'm gonna actually just take a little bit of this, start pulling it, because maybe it'll be able to get white. There's a possibility. Uh, mold it into a ball, kind of roll it out a little bit, take some of the red, also mix that up. Not as much as the other one though, because I was trying to make that one white, but now we combine them together. Roll it up a little bit, and in it. We twist. We twist, we roll, we curve for the cane. You know what, that, that is a candy cane. Slapping and pulling things. I should not be a candy maker. It's hot. It's fine, again, I'm wearing eight gloves. A little bit of white. A little bit red. Roll them out. It's just like working with molten Play-Doh. It's a good time. Slap them together. Roll them out again. Hit a bit. Make it a little twisty. It literally is just molten Play-Doh. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> All of the sugar off of the placemat. Not placemat, silk mat. Okay, it is getting kind of white. But it's also really hot. <laughs> hot. Ah! <laughs> I haven't burned myself though, I'm very proud of myself. But if all else fails, I just rip off a glove. Which is what we would do in culinary school. We would have all of our uh, four gloves on each hand. And if the sugar stuck to your glove and it was starting to burn you, you just rip off that layer of glove and you keep going. We're getting down to the end of it. So I think I'm just gonna make one really, really big one with the remainder of the sugar because it's getting real crunchy at this point. Massive candy cane. I'm just gonna pin in it, pin in it, in it. I'm gonna stretch it out. Because the pieces are really big right now, or it's like really thick. <laughs> it's a candy snake. It's like a candy cane, but it's, sn it's stink shaped. Ta da! Gloves! Off! <laughs> God, my hands are so sweaty now. <laughs> they are kind of cooled down now. Like the ones that I started making in the beginning are cool. Look at that. Candy cane. I've been told to break off some of the snake. The snake's still, it's not warm, but it's still pliable. So I think I'm gonna do one of the little candy canes. Snap it in half. I definitely could have added a lot more peppermint extract. Cause it literally just tastes like sugar. Like it's all sugar. But I'm gonna... I don't know if you guys heard that, but like that was all static electricity. 
Now we got this thing, which... It's hard now. The static was audible. That was so weird. Like, I felt it in my hands. Anyway, we're gonna break this up to, again, the best of my abilities. And then we're gonna dip it in chocolate. So I need... You will actually work. I think this is good. Put down maybe just one of my shitty cutting boards. Well, I mean, I did want it to break, so. Can I get this piece out though? There we go. Oh, it broke a lot more in weird places. All right. I'm gonna break these into bite-sized pieces. Again, to the best of my ability. Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> I'm struggling, but I think that works. I got some bite-sized pieces to dip in chocolate. The chocolate's starting to melt. Heck yeah. I got, actually got chocolate dipping forks. For some reason I know where these are, but nothing else in my kitchen. Look at that. Tiny fork. I'll stab you with it. It's not sharp, but it would still probably hurt a little bit. Girl, I've already been stabbed today. Okay, I'm stabbing everyone except Danny Inferno. Sorry, the rest of you guys got the short stick. The chocolate's melty. I got a fork, stabby fork. I'm literally just gonna take pieces, hub up, dip them in, cover them up, give them a good little shaky shake, nice, nice little shaky shake, and then onto the parchment. I'm just dipping things in chocolate, having a good time. How can you not have a good time when you're dipping things in chocolate? So we tried the candy canes already. We tried that, just not with the chocolate yet, but the chocolate needs to solidify. I also have this knife that I'm going to put over here. Not in the sink, because that is dangerous. Don't be putting knives in your sink. Put them next to the sink so you don't stab yourself when you just shove your hand in there. All right, let me look at the bark. The bark is ready to be barked. It broke into chunks. It's... It's really good. I think I added like the perfect amount of peppermint extract to this one. I didn't add enough to the candy canes, but this one's really good.